Hi Chris here with the Cube Mix Plus. So this is the successor to the i7 book. It's basically a revised model because they've just changed a few things on there. So the CPU has changed now to the Core M3 7Y30, so it should actually be a nice improvement in performance there. The SSD capacity has gone from 64 gigabytes from the i7 book to now 128 gigabytes. The rest are the same, so we have wireless AC, Wacom stylus support. So let's have a look at it now in greater detail. So this is the typical Banggood box you get when they don't actually use the original box here. So they cut down on the shipping costs that this is tax free. When I get stuff with DHL, I have to pay always taxes, which is really annoying. So it should be well predicted in here. It's a polystyrene box, so let's get this open. All right, so we've got a few cube VIP member card things, something that looks to be all in Chinese. Actually, no, not on Chinese. Just a few things there on the specs of it. So it does have a 10.6 inch 1080p screen. This is the same screen that was used in the Surface Pro 2. And why they've kept using that screen for so long is because it actually supports styluses. So that's why they've kept it. And the power adapter is rated to 12 volts, 2.5 amps. Now they have included a USB 3 adapter because it does have micro USB 3 on the side of the tablet just like the i7 book and the i7 stylus before that. So it is well packaged up in here. And I'm not too sure if I actually like this in white. It just, to me, that makes those bezels stand out even more than usual. So it has a pre-applied screen protector on it just to really protect it in transit. So obviously Windows Home button down here and then we have a two megapixel front facing camera on the back of it, a five megapixel camera. This is made out of alloy. That has a nice feel to it. Not much has really changed in the design really, nothing, the color is the only thing. So along the top, here we have a reset button, power button, volume up and down, those are made out of metal. Now this part along here, this is plastic for the antenna reception there for wireless AC that it has on board. Now because the design hasn't changed, we still have both of the speakers on the right hand side, which is not great at all for stereo separation. And if they're anything like the i7 stylus and book speakers, they're not really that good. On the bottom, there's a 10 pogo port pin arrangement. These two slots here, of course, are where that docks into the keyboard. Now I do have the keyboard. I will show you that shortly. So around the outer edges here, this is plastic and the front is of course made out of glass. So ports, DC in for charging. There's the micro USB three port and then Type C, now this is a Type C 3.1, USB 3.1. So it will support simultaneous charging data and display out, which is really good. Micro SD card slot, and then of course a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack that supports microphones. Now let's see how much it weighs. Comes in at 706 grams, adjust the tablet. And the weight of both the keyboard and the tablet is 1.36 kilos and the thickness is 18.7 millimeters. And so here's the keyboard. Now, if you wanna get the keyboard slightly marginally cheaper, but not in a matching color, then you can just buy the i7 book keyboard, but don't get the i7 stylus keyboard. It has to be the i7 book or of course the Mix Plus keyboard. So this sports the new color scheme. I also got this here from Banggood. Okay, so white and silver. And it's a nice change, I guess. The keyboard doesn't look as bad as the, the white large bezels of the tablet. So this keyboard I'm very familiar with because I have used it before on the i7 book. And it's actually quite a solid, well to put together keyboard. There's really not much flex in that at all. We've got this little rubber feet here to keep this 
away from the screen. So it's not actually going to touch the screen or the keys and get it scratched at all. And there we have the touchpad, which looks unchanged to me, apart from the fact that it is now in silver. It does have hardware mouse buttons in there. I will check that out once I get the tablet all powered up. And on the top, there are two status LEDs and then the docking mechanism, which is made out of metal. Quite well made. And here you can see the USB 2.0 port either side. The bottom is plastic, the top, the palm rest is metal, and we have the four rubber feet there. So we just don't need to hold it in place, then the magnets should take care of the rest. So this here is the maximum angle it will recline back. Now that is of course because there's a counterweight in the keyboard, any further back it would risk tipping over when you touch the screen. That feels quite sturdy. You can see there's a little bit of wobble in there. That is normal. That happens even on the known Western brands as well do that. And you can adjust that angle. So when it's propped up, that raises the keyboard up as well to just help improve typing, make it feel a little better. All right, so I just get this powered on for the first time. Hopefully there's charge in here. Now there normally is out of the factory unless it powers on in transit. So I see the cube logo come on, get the screen protector off. So it does have a pre-applied screen protector that's already behind there. So that was very quick to get into Windows, not bad at all. So Windows 10 is activated, full 4 gigabytes of RAM. Nothing's being allocated to the internal GPU. And we'll have a look now under the disk drive. So disk drive, 4C 128 gigabyte SSD. That is the typical Chinese brand they use. And we'll have a look at wireless. So dual band wireless AC 3165. Now that performed on the i7 book really well. So I'm expecting the same or similar results here. I'm still adjusting to these massive white bezels. I think because they've made it white, it just seems to make the bezels look even larger, which is a bit of a shame. I'd wish they just kept it black, but obviously they wanted to change it to make it look like a completely new model. So free available space, we have 104 gigabytes, which is a lot better than the i7 book, which you only got, I think it was about 48 gigabytes free. So I have a Wacom stylus here from my i7 book that I had, and you can see hover feature, that works well. And these styluses, if you want the best stylus performance, the Wacoms, at least on these Chinese tablets, work really, really quite well, very accurate and no problems really getting around. Now we'll go into the greater detail with the stylus. In the review, I'll use OneNote. Check out the performance there. With the 100, sorry, 1024 levels of pressure sensitivity that it has as well on there. Now we'll look at the panel here with my typical demo images that I always test out on, or have on these devices, on these tablets and things I get. So the reproduction looks to me quite nice. It's, it's a good panel. I mean, this was a premium panel inside the Microsoft Surface Pro quite a few years ago now, but it's still not too bad. So 10.6 inches, not exactly the largest screen, but it makes, of course, the tablet more portable. But not bad. Now these are oversaturated images from a Galaxy Note 4. Now I just wanted to mention too that because it has a plastic screen protector on here and the tip of the stylus is in fact plastic as well, if you get the cube ones that is, it will end up leaving little tiny fine scratches all over the screen protector. So it might pay to buy a few of those if you're going to be using the stylus all the time or even have a look at a tempered glass screen protector so then you don't run into that problem. But not a bad screen at all. So the screen isn't fully laminated, so there is a gap between the, the glass on the front and then the IPS below. You can see there of approximately, I would say, one to one and a half millimeters. It's not the worst gap I've seen, but it isn't the best. But it's something really we have to live with in this price category. I really wish China would start using fully laminated one glass solutions. All right, so while I'm here, I thought I would just check out a couple of benchmarks and things. But first, I wanted to point out that the RAM is running dual channel 1866 megahertz, which is good. That is the maximum supported speed of the Core M3 7Y30. 
Now that's actually faster than the Techlast X5 Pro that I tested out. That RAM is only running at 1600 megahertz, although in that particular model you do get eight gigabytes of RAM. This only has four. So the benchmarks I have run just quickly. Geekbench 4, this score is better than the X5 Pro. Now that's the only other Core M 7Y30 tablet I have tested out so far. So good speeds there. I think that's actually really great, the multi-core score there, considering this is only a, a dual-core CPU. Four threads as well, but here's the wireless speeds. So Intel wireless AC, very good speeds there from my 300 megabit line that I have, fiber optic, and the range of it seems really good too. So I was monitoring the temperatures. This is where I have my biggest concern because if you've seen my review of the i7 book, that one got up to 88 degrees when gaming. At the moment, I hope you can see that, but it's 80 degrees here. Now that's only just running Geekbench. Twice I ran that just to get it nice and warm. So I'm a little bit worried about temperatures. Later on I'll check out, of course, in the full review. I might even have a gaming review of this before then. I do think that it's probably going to get up to around similar temperatures. It might need my thermal mod. Hopefully not, but we'll see what happens there. So the SSD benchmarked that as well. Now those read speeds are good, apart from the 4K of 7s are a little low and the write speeds are low, but the 4K randoms, they're quite good. Now if you wanted to put a larger drive in there, a faster drive, you can do that. For example, a 256 gigabyte one M2 SATA 3, 22 by 42 is the spec. That will give you faster writes there, but I mean, it's not too bad, the reads. It is a SATA 3 drive after all. So just like the i7 stylus and the i7 book, the speakers are on the right hand side. I really wish they had changed this and they were quite poor on the last model. And since it's exactly the same kind of hardware, I expect them to be exactly the same. So let's have a listen to the speakers. Yeah, as you can hear from that, really, they aren't that good for tablet speakers. They're very flat. They have an okay kind of volume to them. I would really like them to be much louder than that. And of course, stereo separation, non-existent because it's both coming out of the right-hand side. So the USB ports on there, all three of them, you've got two on the keyboard dock and then the USB 3 port will power an external hard drive. I've just tested that out and this one is working at USB three speeds. It's a real shame that it's only got a micro USD, a USB port on there. I really wish that was a full size one, but since the design is the same as the i7 book, I knew there wasn't gonna be any changes there. Front facing camera works quite well. Two megapixel camera that can record in 720p, 30 frames per second, and it's reasonably bright, you can see. Well, I do have two powerful studio softbox lights on at the moment. Now, the rear camera is five megapixel autofocus. It looks to be average, but it will be fine for something like Skype use. If you were thinking, where is the microphone on it? I haven't seen that. Well, it's actually this tiny little gap here. One person mentioned to me, I think it was the i7 stylus. They said it looks like someone has jammed a screwdriver in there to try and lift up the screen glass, which I thought was quite funny. No, but that is by design, that little gap is where the microphone is. Now the touchpad isn't the biggest because the keyboard isn't the biggest, being only a 10.6 inch tablet, but the accuracy of it seems okay. Um, it's nowhere near the best touchpad I have used. I think out of the Chinese devices I have tested and reviewed, the Show Me Me Notebook has to be one of the best ones with its glass surface. It does support gestures, double tap, right click, double finger scroll, all those kind of things. And it also supports those annoying gestures. The one I really hate, which is that one I keep triggering by mistake is the minimize one. So the swipe up and down the minimize thing when you don't actually want to suddenly minimize everything to desktop, I end up doing that. So the feedback of the keys is quite good and it's very firm. Now I'm pushing down really hard here. I do like typing on this keyboard. Now at 10.6 inches, it's not the most spacious keyboard, but I find it works well. 
Okay, so that's my unboxing. Well, it's almost like a review, really, but I will have the full review when I will test out gaming some other benchmarks as well. I'll run things like Cinebench and try and get it really hot too to find out whether it will run into thermal throttling, the issue that plagued the i7 book, its predecessor. Now, apart from that, everything is looking good so far in here because I'm very familiar with the design. The build of it is, is excellent, really. It's not bad. It's very solid, the tablet. And the camera, front-facing camera, looks good, as you saw in my quick little test there. Nice screen. Now, battery life also will be tested out fully in my full review. The keyboard's great to type on. The touchpad isn't so great. And the speakers also don't sound that great. But so far, this is looking like one of the best options because the speed of it seems to be the fastest tablet I have tested so far out of China. And, of course, we do have that Wacom stylus support and this is the only model with it. Thank you so much for watching this unboxing and hopefully I will see you back in the channel with the full review and the gaming review for this model here, the Cube Mix Plus.